Hello and welcome to Senior Speak New Hampshire on your Concord TV, sponsored by AARP. I am Karen Almer Dorsch, the producer host of this program, and I thank you viewers for being with us today. It's really been a long haul through th these last two years, and you know, everything goes on, and of course, what continues to go on all the time is our legislature. So as we sit here today, you will recognize my guest because you have seen him many times on this program. And that is Todd Fahey, who is our state director of AARP New Hampshire. And we're going to discuss a little bit about advocacy. And we're going to start with how we do our work here in New Hampshire with the State Department. So, Todd, welcome. Well, hello. Nice to be back with you after quite a long time. Oh. And we, I know we filmed in the virtual world, but here we are in person. Yes, and isn't it wonderful? It is. Todd and I have not, actually not seen one another for two years. That is that's really something that just never happened before. No, absolutely so. <laughs> not. So it's so good to see you again. So it's great to see you too. Okay, Todd. Well, I mean, so I guess the thing we talk about is the really three things, right? Talk about um, our advocacy work in New Hampshire and how we go about doing our advocacy work and what advocacy is. I mean, people may not know. That's right? true. And then the federal work that we're doing as an organization. Right. So, so talk a little bit about what adv advocacy really is, Todd. Well, advocacy takes the form of all kinds of things, right? So most of you would know if, like, you're an advocate for a friend. Let's say you're uh, you have a, maybe maybe you have maybe you have somebody you care for, and you're an advocate for them, and you advocate for their health care needs. Or you have at one point you may have been a parent, and you advocate for your children in school right. with their teachers. And you know, for those of us, uh, for us as AARP, we're very focused on civic engagement. And what that means is exercising our right to have our voices heard individually and then collectively as an organization. And also making sure that, um, that, that we advance and support policies that, in our case, um, make life better for New Hampshire's 50 plus. Um, right. Their families and the communities in which those 50 plus and their families live. Right, and, and I do want to tell you viewers, I do want to remind you that AARP is nonpartisan. And my good friend has on his purple shirt today, which is nonpartisan. Um, and I will say also that it took AARP for me to really recognize the advocacy I needed to do to make sure things were going well in my life once I retired. And, um, you know, uh, all of a sudden I realized that, oh, politics, which I had shunned for or 60 years, um, really had a, a purpose in my life. Sure and does. the purpose was that I need, as a citizen of this state and of this country, to safeguard my freedoms. And that's what AARP has really brought to me, which is, it's just a wonderful feeling to think that I'm helping people that are my age and older live a very healthy, happy, active life. Well, you certainly are. I mean, and you are, you know, one of the best advocates we've had as an organization. And not only is Karen a great host, but she's, a, she's an advocate in her own right. And so, look, I want people to understand there's nothing, um, when we use the word advocate, advocate or advocacy or activism or activist there's nothing wrong with that if you want to see yourself as an activist you're one who's been activated to sort of safeguard your rights and speak up for things that matter to you we live in a representative democracy so it's not a pure democracy so if we don't all raise our hand 1.3 million of us to make something happen we we elect people who speak for us and it is important for us in this organization AARP New Hampshire is very focused on ensuring that those who we elect to office, be they local office, state office, federal office, that those folks hear our voice and that they hear our concern. There's nothing wrong about that. There's nothing untoward about that. That is the nature of democracy. It is indeed. So when we talk about advocacy, it's simply just injecting yourself 
for our purposes in the in the process. So we advocate on the federal level, on the state level at the state house. And I know we're going to talk about both of those, and then we do some local advocacy, basically you know going before boards and and um, um, boards of selectmen um, right. and city councils to talk about policies that they might want to adopt. We don't tell people what to do. Certainly on the local level, this being New Hampshire, the live for your die <laughs> state. I grew up here, just so you know, I understand the, the strand of uh, the very deep strands of libertarianism that run through New Hampshire, and you know, that's who we are, right? right. So, but, but policies that affect all of us that are voted on by our elected officials um, do deserve and absolutely require the voice and the attention of us as voters. We have, you know, 225,000 members uh, in AARP, and many of them do vote uh, in very high, very high numbers, and I thank you all for that. Right. And also, it's, it's extremely important because it helps us to be wise voters. In other words, if, we're, if we know how our particular people stand on issues, we can vote our voice more wisely. Here's a way to think about it. Democracy is a contact sport, right? So it's not, your, your job doesn't necessarily only end. It could, but when you elect somebody or when you cast your vote. I mean, the most fundamental element of democracy is voting, right? Democracy is participatory. So the expectation is, is that you vote. Um, and uh, we're, very, we're very focused on making sure people have the right to vote and that that right to vote is not um, unnecessarily impeded. It's a fundamental right in the democratic process for people to be able to cast a vote. In, in, the, in the last election, as you know, when we had uh, the voting, we agreed as a state we would, uh, we would augment our, or make easier to vote absentee right. because of the pandemic. And right. the 50 plus voted in massive numbers. Yes, they did. Of, um, and you know, we have absentee voting and a process that's been tried and true for those of you who might be rolling your eyes and saying, you know, we've had a lot of voter fraud, there were certainly allegations of voter fraud. I think there was maybe one very, very minor case in New Hampshire. And if you don't want to hear it from me, hear it from the Secretary of State, uh, right. David Scanlon. Um, well, I guess he's now our Secretary of State, or he soon will be. I know. Um, with um, our, our, our former Secretary of State exactly. stepping down, Bill Gardner. But, but, but the fact of the matter is our elections in New Hampshire are good. They are run by our friends and neighbors in many cases who are paid a small sum to go yes, make sure. Yes, absolutely. So um, I, just, I think it's important that people understand that. Um, obviously getting, getting good information in all aspects of your life, whether it's about the pandemic, whether it's about voting, whether it's about the issues that matter. You know, and I know you're very focused on this, these topics on this show. Just take the time to inform yourself. I mean, the the world needs that right now. We need. Why oh, do we ever? You know, we can all agree. We can disagree. And, right. And I, I recognize that there's a whole gradation of the political spectrum. True, true. Um, I, 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 and you know, I, not to be partisan, but I do believe that when we have situations such as one party in control, be it at the state level, the national level, the local level, or whatever. It is extremely important that we be watching what is happening so that our freedoms are not taken away from us. Democracy is participatory regardless of which party it is. And as you well know, and you said it best, we are nonpartisan. And what that means is we don't support, we are definitely a political organization. Right. We engage in the political process and we do so proudly, but we are not partisan. So right. we don't support the Democrats, the Republicans. We don't have a political action committee. We don't endorse candidates. That's what sold me to AARP. We don't do any of those things. We are in that sacred space, like in the middle of nonpartisanship. We're, exactly. focused, we're focused on the issue. For instance, you know, we think that Social Security is a critically important program that has lifted more Americans out of poverty than any other. So do we support Social Security? Absolutely. Medicare? Absolutely. Do we support waste, fraud, and abuse in Medicare? Absolutely not. Right. You know, um, and we can talk about what some of our issues are at the federal right. level. Right. Let's, let's, let's move to the state level. Some state of our level issues first. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want to talk about how we get to the state issues? Yeah. What we do? That would be great. So, you know, we, AARP has a policy book, and so we have policy. There are certain things that AARP is focused on and certain things that they're not. So if we have a stated policy on it, meaning a position that we've taken, right. 
then, then we will use that to guide our advocacy. So we'll go to the State House and, and, and maybe testify to the committees yeah. when they're hearing the bills in support of or in opposition to laws that, that elected officials are proposing from both sides of the aisle. And we do that uh, through our staff. Uh, we're based in Concord, and we do it through our, our, many of our citizen volunteers, and they are very, very well schooled. And we have dozens of them who, who we help, we help them to find their voice. And if their voice coincides with our issues, um, then we would be happy to have them make some phone calls and, and, and speak respectfully and with authority and um, from an informed position to our elected officials. Again, remember, it's a circular thing. We have exactly. a democracy, a representative democracy, meaning we, have, we, we elect people who represent us but we also need to be in touch with them and, frankly, to hold them accountable for how they do or don't vote. Exactly. Exactly. So, I, ju I just called my senator this morning. There you go. I mean, yeah. and you should. And so I would tell your voters that I, I don't know if this number is still true, but I've heard the number, uh, you know, bantered about saying on most issues, people aren't, they don't really, elected officials don't hear from any more than a few a handful of constituents. So constituents meaning the people who um, they uh, they they uh, represent. So right. if you if you elect Senator Y or Senator Z or Senator A from your town to represent you, you are a constituent of that senator, exactly. right? And and oftentimes they don't ever hear from anybody. So if you pay attention, it's fair to make a phone call, call your senator, go to the, it's easy to find them on the state of New Hampshire website. Exactly. Just look them up. Know who they are. Yeah. And, and it's, it's also very exciting. It gives, you, it gives me a feeling that I'm actually trying to do something to keep things going for us in the way that we want them to go. If that, I, you know, and sometimes I do that as a private citizen. And sometimes I ha uh, and testifying for AARP at the house, State House. Um, I just find that tremendously fun and exciting. Well, it's, it's great, it's just and, and you have done wonderful work, and the, the members who are listening, thank you for being members, and Karen is uh, yeah. one, among the best we have, and she's done spectacular work uh, in the service of this organization, including this show, frankly. So, you know, democracy is participatory. It's not a spectator sport, okay? If you don't, I mean, the key, the elements, the ba most basic of the basic elements is voting. <laughs> you got to vote. That's right. So, uh, you know, and we vote in pretty high numbers in New Hampshire, and the 50 plus vote in higher numbers still. And AARP members vote in even higher numbers than the normal uh -huh. population and the 50 plus because, uh -huh. and we're proud of that. And we want to make them informed voters. And again, we do not tell people how to vote. Um, or how to use their voice. We explain the issues and, and what the existing policy might be or how a certain course of action going this way will affect them and how it going that way will affect them. Right, right. Okay, so, all right, so we are definitely, prescription drugs are one of our issues. Yeah, so we, we, uh, we, we often do surveys. Some of you might get our surveys or get phone calls, and for those of you who have answered, thank you. But we do send um, information out, and we, some, we often will ask our members what they think. So we did a, fairly recently, the last few weeks, we did a non-scientific survey. Usually our surveys are very thousand people, non-scientific. Uh -huh. But this one hit about 700 people, and so I'm not checking texts uh, here. <laughs> 631, and, and it was non-scientific. And we asked people, like, really what they were very focused on. And I can just tick down what they were. That would be great. Yeah, so... Um, the, the big one was people wanted to make sure, um, you know, more than 8 and 10 wanted to make sure that we advocate for services and, and funding to keep people in their homes and communities as they age. People like to be amen, at home. Amen, amen, so amen. That was tops, right? That was the big one. Um, the next one, the next big one of, of our list, uh, tied for second and third, just uh, 80%, 8 and 10 people said, they want to ensure that we, they, they told us, they wish to, for us to advocate that they have the right to, um, to vote safely, whether in person um, or absentee, uh -huh. without, without restriction or barriers. So I would tell your folks, um, I'm not telling you how to vote, but to the extent that you see that our elected officials are taking up votes for, that might affect your rights to vote, Pay attention to that. Right. Make your voice be heard. You, exactly. might you might support the initiative. You might oppose it. Either way, 
Make your voice be heard. Right. A democracy is participatory. The third one, 79.2%, um, not surprising, um, um, advocating for ready access to COVID-19 vaccines and boosters. Uh -huh. and let me be clear about language, right? And, and because ready access is different than mandates. And I understand people are divided nationally right. and in New Hampshire about whether we should mandate or we should mandate masks or mm -hmm. mandate shots or mm -hmm. the vaccine. But 79% said they should have the choice right. to get ready access, right? So they want to be able to know that if they make that decision, it's good for them and their families that they, eight in 10 of you, uh, people we spoke to, they want to make sure that we have ready access to those vaccines and boosters. That's right. pretty important. Yes, that is. And then, um, and then, you know, the last, um, you know, uh, still pretty important, uh, three and two and, you know, th basically 60%, 70%, really wanted us to look at the housing shortage and how we deal oh. with housing. Big issue for young people, big issue for older people. Exactly, exactly. Um, so important because our population is aging and it is aging rapidly. And if we do not have a workforce that can live close mm -hmm. to us to t help us take, we're in trouble. We are in trouble, and let's let's. We should all be fair. Like, uh, I think a lot about it, and I, I think I've mentioned this on the show. I mean, in a prior life, I uh, um, for many years I practiced law. I served on my local land use board. I was born in New Hampshire. Right. I lived most of my life, and most of my professional and personal life has been in New Hampshire. So I I understand. I do think as we approach this issue of housing, we need to be aware that there are different views about how we do it and where we do it. Right. Exactly. And and, and I think. That's one of the beautiful things about being nonpartisan is that it's certainly in my position, I've said it many times, um, and, and thank you for pointing out the shirt. This is my nonpartisan political action shirt. It's neither red nor blue, it's purple. There you go. So, you know, it's just it's in the middle and it doesn't, there you, you know, go. It's, anyways. But uh, we, um, it's important that we, 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 we work together, both sides of the aisle, to figure out what is the right solution for exactly. New Hampshire. Exactly. What's the right solution for New Hampshire? And to your point, it's 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 a big problem. So, younger people have got to be able to afford housing. Because in fairness, if we want them to stay here, we need to give them places to live, which is a basic human need, but not so expensive that they really can't just enjoy their families. So you don't want to exactly. end up having housing costs take choices away from them, like you know how they right. raise their families. Right. Or, if they have families, whatever the case may be. But that's something people think is quite important. So those are the things we're going to advocate for and engage at, engage on at the State House because they're important issues. They're within our policy as AARP, and we're going to use our voice um, and amplify the voice of our members to, to explain reasoning and thinking to our elected officials, many of whom, frankly, are very, very focused on doing the right thing. But, you know, sometimes they need good input to give good output. Exactly. Yes. Yes, they do. And um, because we can't or I, I, we can't go to the state house now uh, and advocate as AARP people, because as AARP people, we are practicing all of the good policies of wearing masks and six feet distance and so on and so yeah, forth. It's a little more challenging now in this right. environment. Yeah, so t talk about how we do that. Well, how we do it now, you you know, in 2021, when the pandemic first, I mean, the, first, the pandemic hit in 2020, right? And right. It hit in March, and then, you know, obviously things shut down pretty readily. But we were able, the, the legislature, I, it was probably not the legislature, I, I may be mistaken, but I know whether it was the legislature deciding itself or it was whether the governor, right. governor's new by executive order, there was an ability to testify remotely. Exactly. But we don't have that opportunity now, which is difficult for some because you can still go there and testify in person. But, you know, the pandemic is still around us, as we can see, and the virus is still circulating among exactly. us. Exactly. So, uh, but there, people can uh, people can still watch hearings. In many cases, they can, they can not necessarily testify, but they can sign in and support. Exactly. Or in opposition to a certain bill or a certain, a, a bill is a, is something that is something that is debated before it becomes a law. And um, so we talk about the certain bills. Those are things that they might propose a law. And, and right. then we debate it and discuss it. And, and then people decide whether 
uh, once the legislature votes and the governor signs it into law, it becomes exactly. a law or not. It might just die as a bill. Right, right. But that's so, how we do the work. Yeah, that is how we do the work. And um, the, um, the access that I use to, <clears throat> excuse me, to watch sessions or hearings or whatever is the um, New Hampshire.gov or, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's very easy. I mean, it's a, it's a very simple process, and and I just feel like I'm keeping in up, you know, I'm keeping on task with things that are happening, even though I cannot or do not want to be in person. Sure. As a citizen, you know, testifying, but I can write letters to my editor, I can call my senators, I can call my representatives. There's not a problem. You can you can absolutely, positively, totally, unequivocally. Call your state representative, your state senator, your um, executive council member, right. or your governor, or your elected uh, uh, representative to Congress. Um, you, you know, you're either in con congressional district one or two, right? Or either one of our mm. uh, state senators. So there's two state, there's two federal senators and two, uh, you know, uh, right. you know, U.S. senators and uh -huh. two U.S. Congress people. It's with your than your right to make those phone calls, right? And, and, and in a place like New Hampshire, your voice matters. It really does. Yeah, it really does. Um, you know, I and in the details, you've used your voice. You've actually seen it happen, and they should hear it from you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is, uh, it is very exciting, I think. And, and it also, um, you know, it, it makes me understand that I'm something, I'm, I'm part of a bigger whole. And that bigger whole is what I'm trying to protect. And, and I, I really am feeling at this point in where we are uh, that our democracy really needs us speaking and saying what we feel and what we want. Well, I, I, I love that you say that, and, and, and I, do, I do have a direct appeal to the people listening. Um, the 50-plus voters have been a reliable voting block for years. They continue to be a reliable voting block in New Hampshire and elsewhere. But it's not just enough that you vote. I think it's important that you speak to your children and your grandchildren about being informed citizens. Now, I recognize that we all consume our information from different places, right. and there's a ton of it to consume. Yeah. It's hard to know where to consume it from, but it's important to get good information from reliable and credible sources. Yeah. And if you really want to know what's happening on a hearing or what your representative said or didn't say, do as Karen does, walk on, log on, find out what bill it is. They all have numbers, yep. HB something, SB something. You watch the hearing on it if it's televised and, and um, just watch it. And you'll, you don't have to listen to anybody. It doesn't get filtered through anybody's minds. New right. Granite Staters are smart, wily folks, That's right? Right. That's right. Um, you know, one of the original, what, 13, right, <laughs> colonies? And, you one know, of the original. around a long time. So. <laughs> Use your smarts, pay attention, and then make your own decisions. I mean, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that either. And I would appeal to people to do that. It takes a little more work, but you know, there's a little more time now that we're not really going anywhere. Well, that's <laughs> it. That's it. We're not going anywhere. And, and uh, you know, it also, for me, it has been a, a remedy in a way for feeling isolated mm -hmm. because I'm seeing faces on the screen that I know, recognize, etc. Um, and it really cuts down on that feeling of being hemmed in and sure. not being able to go yeah. anywhere. Yeah, I mean, your voice matters. I mean, again, the takeaways, I think, from this discussion, from my perspective, is like democracy is participatory. If you have a democracy, it's not just your, your right. It is your duty to participate. It is. I, I it. totally and agree. To, and, and to participate as an informed citizen. So you should know who you're voting for and what they stand for. So a lot of what we do as an organization is we want to make sure that we get candidates on the record so that we ask the questions so that people know where their representatives, where their, their, their elected officials stand. Right. Because if, if nobody asks the question, then nobody knows, right? If nobody says, then you might say, well, she had a really nice, a nice suit or a <laughs> lovely hairstyle or, or he is particularly uh, articulate or eloquent. Um, and that may move you and that might be okay. Um, and, and it's important that you 
you listen to what they're saying and right. what they stand for and then, then decide whether it's important to you. Do you agree with those things or do you not? And I know a lot of you, I'm, I'm speaking very basically here, I mean no insult, but I do think we need to, we need to dial back and, and really recommit to the decency and, and, and a lot of the fundamental things that made this democracy so great. It was Absolutely. decency, it was like caring about one another, caring, caring about hearing people, like listen right. to what they say. Right. You know, nobody has the full lock on truth. No. Right? And can we touch just briefly, because we've only sure. got a few minutes left, on the federal issues that we're working on? I mean, uniformly across party lines, um, people are very concerned about the cost of prescription drugs. I yeah. mean, they're just, it, it's, a, it's an issue. Um, for sure, we understand that uh, the pharmaceutical industry has done great things. Um, for sure, brought, uh, brought to bear some of the vaccines that we're relying upon exactly. to help get us out of the pandemic. Yeah. Don't take any of that away from anybody. But, um, and we certainly appreciate that and understand where, what, what role that plays. And it is really important that drugs that come to market be affordable. Because it's like going into a supermarket, you could have all the food you could possibly eat over right. a lifetime or at least a month if you're really hungry. I don't know how much you could eat in a supermarket. But if you don't have any money to afford the food, it's all for naught. Right? And right. there, there are many Granite Staters who, as we're taping this right now, are making the choice or thinking about whether they're going to ration their meds or whether they're going to have to choose between paying the rent, keeping the heat on, which is tough in New Hampshire in the winter, or uh, paying for their prescription drugs. Yep. And so we are very focused on uh, you know, uh, asking Congress to deal with this. Mo big issue is helping uh, Medicare negotiate prescription drug prices. It's, yep. called, it's called secretarial negotiation. We are very, very focused on that as an organization, and that'll be our uh, big focus for AARP. Uh, it has been in 2021 and before, and it will be in 2022. Well, Todd, thank you so much for helping us once again recognize how extremely important it is for us to be educated voters and active people in our country with our government. And thank you once more, always, dear friend. And until we meet again, be good, do good, be one.